aviation industry really grew here on Long Island. It was close to Manhattan, uh, where the, the power was and the money was. It was uh, the topography here was nice and flat and windy. And it attracted a lot of folks who wanted to be the first to do things, whether it was flying the Atlantic like Charles Lindbergh, whether it was air meets that took place at Belmont Park 100 years ago. It became a mecca for aviation flyers, manufacturers, and people who just love to fly. It really means a lot, and people should really, you know, learn about what Long Island went through, or that there truly was a cradle of aviation on Long Island. This is a place, like a lot of museums, that you can actually impact someone's life. To see a seven or eight year old with a gleam in their eye when they look up at uh, some of the airplanes or the spacecraft and see that that person may be the next one to go to Mars is exciting. And also to see the gleam in the eye of a, uh, someone who's a World War II vet uh, or someone who worked at Grumman or Republic and they walk around and see some of the handiwork that they did. You get some special satisfaction from that. What I like about the museum is that it's not like my school, which is there's, it's a lot less students and a lot less distractions and you're just able to focus on what you're doing. And it's also a lot more um, space and more hands-on. The Waco glider we have was built in Queens. It was restored by the volunteer crew here. The unique thing of it is there are not many gliders left in the world. This was the type of plane that was used during the D-Day invasion to transport troops behind enemy lines silently. They had about a 50 to 60 percent success rate, so it was a dangerous mission and we're proud to have one here uh, that's been fully restored. The lunar module is special because it's probably the crowning moment in Long Island's aerospace history. Long Island is the home of the lunar module. Uh, we have one of only three that are built to go to the moon that are still on the planet today. The men and women who worked on that program, a lot of them still live here. You know, when you consider the danger, it was a big achievement, uh, probably one of the greatest engineering achievements in history. My interest started in aviation probably because of my dad. Uh, I found out he was an aviator. It was just in my blood. I just always, you know, built model planes and tried to fly them and whatnot and uh, enjoy it. We're expanding the museum to include a lot more of science, uh, not just the science of air and space, but other sciences like uh, solar energy, renewable energy sources. We're also adding a planetarium component to the IMAX Dome Theater. And we could show laser shows and things like that to expand the attraction of bringing families, schools, and just everybody in general to the museum on a regular basis.